checking out this very cool book, The Art of Steven Universe. First, it's a very, very solid, well-made book. I'll have to say, it's pretty, it's even shiny a little bit. That's kind of cool. And it will look cool in any collection, I'm just saying. So from the get-go, I do have to say that I'm not the biggest fan of this series. Not that I hate it or anything, it's just I never was a dire hard fan of the series. However, I love the looks, I love the music, and I love that it talks about subjects that are not talked about a lot uh, in the industry. So I do like it. It just never grew on me. But I do know all of the songs by heart, just saying. But the reason why I'm telling you this is that you don't need to be a fan of Steven Universe to love this art book. Now, I know some art books are sometimes like little museums to look at and like look at the pictures and have fun. This book is that, yes, but more. So even if you're not a fan of the series, you're going to be very happy about that book because it is one of the most generous art books that I have in my collection. And let me show you why. This is exactly why. It's full of little drawings like that that are not finished, are not polished, and they're just... First, they're made on post-it, so that's kind of cool. But these drawings are pure brain juice of the artist trying to figure some stuff out. For those of you who follow me for a bit, you do know that I advocate a lot for artists to share more of their brainstorming and like their process. And this book is exactly that. It's not so much an art book full of finished, polished concept art images, but who cares? You can find these on Google. This art book is really telling the story of how you make a show, how you research some things, and it is full of information. It's gorgeous. So even from the first pages, you're gonna see that it's gorgeous. And this is the best part. So first, the origin. It's gonna take you through like how they made the show and how they got it greenlit for television. Then character design, of course. But here we have writing and storyboards, sound and vision. So they're gonna talk about the music and stuff. Background and even animation. A lot of art books skip that part because it's more about production. It's kind of hard to put in pages, but they do talk about it. And the onward is a cute part as well. So of course, we're not gonna look through all of the book, but I'm gonna take you through my favorite bits so that you know if you want to get it or not. So the, so the first section is a foreword, of course, with Rebecca Sugar, so that's very interesting. And you're gonna see that, that a lot of the book is made with like little interviews. And that is very good because instead of having somebody who doesn't know anything about the show trying to tell the story of the show and like showing how it's made, like some other art book, this is really just interviews with the actual artists that made uh, the show, so it's very interesting. So first part is the origin, so that part is gonna take you through like um, how it was made, how they came up with the idea. It's very interesting because you get some little student artwork from Rebecca Schneider, which is cool. And as usual, it's full of very heartfelt drawings that you can difficultly find online. Uh, very generous art, uh, very nice process, little notes, very interesting. And one of my favorite parts is all of these, where you see the characters. You see that a lot of it is run on, on, on paper, and I think that is super important. If any of you wants to be a concept artist, it's super important that you learn how to sketch on paper. Don't rely only on your computer. And I know some people are going to say, that is such an old way to think. But it's true. Let's say you're in a meeting. You don't have time to take out Photoshop or your iPad or whatever. You have to be able to be quick on your feet, be quick on your hands, and be able to sketch something. I'm pretty sure all of these drawings were kind of like made into a little meeting over maybe a countertop or a table into a, like a meeting that had like post-its and sharpies and whatnot. Very interesting. And this is something I used to do a lot in school. Uh, you had your drawing and then you would put post-its where you weren't satisfied or tape or whatever, and you would just draw over it. And this is amazing because unlike the eraser where you lose track of what you did if you have the post-it you can kind of peel them to see if it's actually better or not and if it's not you just throw it away and you make a new one so very very cool to see this in an art book and it's very interesting because the same process is also shown into the adventure time art book which is another very good one <laughs> and inside inside this book you see here they have the same process like with the sketch with the post-it and stuff so very interesting to see it also done in steam universe I mean, a lot of the crew were the same people, so maybe that's why. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of very generous, generous art that they give. It's super great. Um, very, very generous. And then you go to the uh, greenlit and development. So this is also lots of writing, lots of very cool reading that you have to read. It's not just picture, it's very uh, cool, solid content in there. And then you get to the character design part, where, then again, super generous. I, I know I keep repeating myself, but this is a powerful art book that everybody should get because it's very nice. Um, this art book, I think, is for everyone. So if you're a veteran in the industry, it's always nice to see how other people do it. But I think even more, this is a powerful book for students or a hobbyist who wants to get into the medium because they really take you step by step and they talk about all the little decisions they made. They have lots of do's and don'ts, very interesting. And after the character design part that every art book has, 
um, we can go to the writing and storyboard, which is then something that very few art books talk about. So very valuable part, especially for people who are starting to get into the industry. A lot of people want to start, want to start storyboarding, but they don't know how. So that is a cool part. And one of my favorite thing with this art book is all the little games they have. It's not rare in studio to have little games to try to get our brain working. So this is the writing game. They would try to get the artists to write together as a group because Steven Universe is a very storyboard driven show. So they would pitch things together and try to get the little uh, bits to act up. So that's the writing game. Very interesting to read if you're trying to get into story development or uh, trying to learn how to work as a team. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, writing. And then we also have this part. They have a kind of a fake storyboard test. This is insane. This is so great. Like, I'll try to just put it in front so that you can actually see what's going on here. So they have this little bit where uh, they have an example of what could happen. And then it's up to the storyboard artist to kind of decide what would go into this picture. They say, Garnet unrolls a canvas with disturbing painting on it. What is the painting? So that's some decisions that um, creative storyboard artists have to take. Like, there's no one else calling the shot, so you kind of have to uh, try it. Fun fact, the Adventure Time art book has a test as well, but it's a character design test, if I remember. Um, so if you're trying to get into storyboard, this is very, very unique and cool to take a look at. And then we have the sound and vision, because, you know, um, my teachers in school used to say that sound is 50% of your final output. If you look at the same scene with two different soundtracks, you can change all the mood in that scene. So very important. Um, it's very great if you have knowledge about music, but even if you don't, um, like, you know, if I, I'm, I'm a musician, I studied music for years. So like all of these things really talk to me more than maybe someone else. But even if you're not uh, knowledgeable in music, um, they have lots of explication on the side and like they talk about the choice that they made with the music. Then we get to background design and painting, which is so <laughs> beautiful. Like it's really my color palette, so I kind of like it. Um, they have this gorgeous painting and on top of that they also share very rough drawing and notes that are very cool to read if you're wondering what they did right what they did wrong super cool i love 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 the interior because we don't get to see those often without the characters usually you have a background it's made to have animation on top and characters kind of hiding everything but it's just cool to see all these peaceful environments that you don't get to see all the time on google so that's cool and then we have the animation in post, and this is so cool. First, you have time charts, which is not something you see often. And this is really, really, really cool. Uh, more and more shorts are starting to share these, and it's very precious for students and just artists trying to kind of replicate a style. So if you're a student and you're trying to animate something in the style of Steven Universe, you're gonna have those. But even if you're a commission artist or just an illustrator, it's interesting to see the limits and all that they have for these even still poses. So. Very cool to see that there's a timesheet, like we don't see these anymore, uh, I mean exposure sheet. And then this part is so gorgeous. Here they share every little step of the character and this is so cool to study. Very cool uh, stuff. And of course you have very dynamic pictures and things to study from. And last but not least, you have the onward part. And the onward part, they just talk about like the future and what they want to do next. And um, there's a lot of crew art in this as well. Super fun to see the character outside of the show's real like art style and etc. So um, quite precious. And then let's not for quite precious. And then let's not forget that they took the time to well first <laughs> they took the time to say who did every piece of artwork, which is super great. But if you go to the end, you have the credits. And this is amazing. Not every art book do that. Um, I mean, I won't name every book that does it, but I know that it's not every art book. So it's just beautiful to see uh, all the names in there. Because then if you saw something that you liked, it's much more easier to kind of go online and try to look at uh, these to find the information of the people that you're looking for. So very fun art book. I hope that you enjoyed this and that it helped you. My final words about this book is that it's a very, very good art book. And what I love is that it's made of interviews of artists. It's very, very generous, as you can see in art. Uh, they even have some fake tests and games that you can try uh, your own mind to. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, generous book. And I hope that you enjoyed this little review. And I mean, it's new. Tell me what you think uh, about it in the comments. And um, yeah, maybe if I should continue this or not. Who knows? I did enjoy taking another look at that book. I haven't opened it in a while, so um, yeah. Let me know which art book you want me to review next. And maybe I'll make it happen. It depends if I have it. 
Um, have a nice day.